These images have led many people to believe that Florida is being swallowed by the ocean. Water spreads across streets in the middle of a sunny afternoon. Garages flood even when there is no storm. Homes are still standing, yet the ground beneath them seems to be sinking, little by little. The first reaction is not surprise, but unease. If you live in Florida, or have ever thought about retiring here, scenes like this no longer feel distant. You start asking why the same street, the same house, is seeing higher water this year than last. Why flooding happens without rain. And why every so-called flood protection measure seems to buy only a small amount of time. What may be most unsettling is not the rising sea itself, but what is quietly happening beneath the ground, out of sight and rarely mentioned in brief news reports. These images are only the surface of a much deeper story, and its consequences may be closer to your daily life than you realize. Let's take a closer look. One, Florida is flooding without storms or heavy rain. In Florida, one image has been repeating itself over the past few years. Not hurricanes, not downpours, no evacuations, no warning sirens, just water. Water spilling out of storm drains, water covering part of a familiar road, water seeping into the lower levels of buildings once considered safe. What confuses people most is that this is happening on clear, sunny days. At first, the explanation sounds simple. Sea level rise, everyone has heard that. Florida has a long coastline, low elevation, and sits on the front line of climate change. For many, the story ends there. But if sea level alone were the cause, Flooding would look the same everywhere in Florida. It does not. Some neighborhoods flood regularly. Others just a few miles away remain mostly dry. In some places, flooding gets worse year after year, even though rainfall has not changed much. In others, high tides now reach farther inland than before, even when no storm is present. That difference raises an uncomfortable question. If the water is coming from the ocean, why does it not arrive the same way everywhere? Gradually, another perspective begins to emerge. Florida is not only dealing with rising water. Florida is dealing with changing ground. Not at the surface, but underneath. Florida has long been seen as a young landscape. Flat terrain, long beaches, sunshine year-round. But geologically, Florida has never been solid ground. Much of the state sits on porous limestone, a rock that dissolves easily and is full of cavities and underground channels. This is what created Florida's underground springs, cave systems, and the sinkholes that can appear without warning. For decades, these features existed quietly. They rarely showed up in everyday urban life. Florida continued to grow. The population increased. Cities expanded. Roads, buildings, and infrastructure were built on a foundation never designed to carry that kind of weight. The problem is that ground does not respond all at once. It does not crack open overnight. It does not collapse like it does in movies. Most of the time, it simply settles a little, a few millimeters, then a few more. Changes so small they are almost impossible to notice in daily life. But in a place like Florida, where elevation is often only inches above sea level, those small changes begin to matter. When the ground sinks even slightly, water does not need to rise higher to flood an area. The same tide, the same rain, the same drainage system. The outcome is different. Roads that once dried quickly begin holding water longer. Low spots turn into familiar collection points. Systems designed for an earlier elevation start to lose effectiveness. What makes this so confusing is that the surface still looks the same. Homes are still standing. Roads still connect neighborhoods. There is no clear sign of a dramatic disaster. Just a growing sense that Florida is getting wetter, even though no one can point to a single change that explains it. This is where the story takes a turn. The question is no longer how high the water is rising, but how much the ground can still hold. And that question takes us away from the familiar images of beaches and ocean waves and deeper into the structure of the land itself. Because if Florida looks like it is sinking into the sea, it may not be because the ocean is swallowing Florida. It may be because Florida, little by little, is sinking on its own. And that is only the surface of the story. Two, the fragile ground. Florida was built on. To understand why Florida responds to water in such a distinctive way, we have to start with a fact that is rarely stated plainly. Florida was never solid ground in the traditional sense. Most of the state sits on limestone, 
a sedimentary rock formed from the remains of marine organisms accumulated over millions of years. Limestone is not dense or uniform. It is porous, fractured, full of tiny cavities, and threaded with underground water channels just beneath the surface. Under natural conditions, this structure exists in a fragile but stable balance. Water seeps in, moves slowly, and then drains away. Pressure is spread evenly. The ground above keeps its shape not because it is strong, but because the forces below are temporarily balancing one another. Florida does not stand firm because of height or hardness, but because of a stable level of saturation in its ground and aquifers. The problem is that this balance was never meant to endure constant and long-lasting change. Unlike regions with dense ground that can carry heavy loads for long periods without obvious deformation, Florida responds slowly, but it remembers. When the structure underneath is disturbed, the limestone does not collapse right away. It compresses. It contracts. It shifts very gradually, in ways that are almost impossible to notice in everyday life. That is why most changes in Florida do not come with clear warning moments. There are no cracking sounds, no clouds of dust, no wide fissures appearing overnight. Instead, small discrepancies slowly accumulate in systems that were built on the assumption that the ground would remain still. For decades, that assumption held well enough. When growth was slower, loads were lighter, and resource use stayed within limits this geology could absorb. But as population surged, cities spread outward, and infrastructure, transportation, and living space continued to place added pressure on the same porous limestone, those older limits began to show. The key point is that this change does not happen evenly. Some areas remain relatively stable for years, while others need only a small shift in groundwater conditions or surface pressure to begin sinking. From above, Florida looks flat and continuous. Below, it is a complex mosaic of strengths and weaknesses interwoven. So when water begins appearing in places that used to stay dry, the natural reaction is to look toward the ocean and search for answers in rising sea levels. But in Florida, the answer often lies right beneath your feet. This is not the story of land suddenly becoming fragile. It is the story of land that was always fragile, now pushed into conditions it was never meant to endure. And when a foundation like this begins to lose balance, it does not send out alarms, it quietly adjusts in its own way. The question is no longer whether Florida is strong enough, but what has been removed from this system over decades that allowed that delicate balance to hold in the first place. The answer lies in something invisible, yet essential. Water. 3. What happens when Florida pumps out its water? If Florida's ground is this fragile, then what matters is not only what it is made of, but what has been holding that structure in place. For most of the state's natural history, the answer was simple. Groundwater. Beneath Florida lies one of the largest groundwater systems in the United States. It supplies drinking water to tens of millions of people and provides the natural pressure that helps the soil and limestone above maintain their shape. In that condition, water is not just a resource. It is part of the geological framework, much like air keeps a tire from collapsing. For decades, this system worked quietly and reliably. Water was pumped for cities, agriculture, and new communities, then gradually replenished by rainfall and natural flow. As long as withdrawal and recharge stayed in balance, the land above showed little response. But that balance has changed. Florida is one of the fastest growing states in the country. Cities have expanded. Farming has intensified. Neighborhoods, golf courses, resorts, and supporting infrastructure have spread into areas that once saw little development. Each individual change made sense on its own. But together, the total amount of water withdrawn kept rising, and more importantly, it did so continuously. When groundwater is pumped out, pressure inside the aquifer drops. In dense ground, this shift might be minimal. In Florida's porous limestone, it triggers a slow but unmistakable response. Cavities begin to compress. Structures once supported by water lose their lift. The land above settles, not because it breaks apart, but because it is no longer being held up as before. This process rarely happens suddenly. It creates no dramatic scene. Instead, it unfolds gradually over many years, sometimes across an entire generation. That is why it is so easily overlooked. People are used to seeing water at the surface, but they rarely notice the water that has been removed below. There is a second consequence even quieter. As freshwater pressure drops, salt water from the ocean starts pushing inland through underground pathways. This saltwater intrusion does not arrive as a visible wave. 
It creeps slowly along hidden channels, altering water chemistry and further weakening the ground's ability to remain stable. From the perspective of city residents, these changes are not felt right away. Water still flows from taps, roads remain usable, daily life goes on, but the system beneath has drifted away from the assumptions used when these areas were planned and built. This is the core paradox of the story. Water is taken to support growth, yet that same removal makes the land less stable. And once the ground sinks even slightly, every surface system, from drainage pipes to road elevations, begins operating closer to its limits. Florida is not sinking because sea levels rose overnight. It is sinking gradually because fresh water has been pumped out year after year. And once the land settles, the same tide and the same rainfall are enough to bring water into places that once stayed dry. This leads to an important realization. What is happening is not a sudden accident. It is the result of a long series of reasonable choices, repeated long enough to alter the very foundation Florida stands on. And this story has not yet reached its deepest impacts. Because beyond the water being taken away, Florida also carries the marks of what has been pulled from beneath the ground over many decades before. 4. The Hidden Mining Scars, Weakening Florida's Ground To understand why some parts of Florida are less stable than others, we have to look beyond the coastal cities and turn inland, where changes unfold more slowly but cut deeper. In central Florida, there are areas that once played a critical role in the state's economy, yet rarely appear in conversations about flooding or subsidence. For decades, these lands were heavily mined to meet one specific demand, phosphate, a key ingredient for modern agriculture. Florida is one of the largest phosphate-producing regions in the United States. To reach these mineral layers, mining operations dig down dozens of meters, continuously pump and drain water, move vast amounts of earth, and then refill the surface when work is complete. On maps and in restoration reports, many of these areas appear to have been returned to their original state. Vegetation grows back. The land is leveled. There are no obvious signs of what once happened below. But geology does not follow the story told by the surface. When limestone layers are cut, drilled, and disturbed, the natural cavities underground change shape. Some are compressed. Others are widened or connected to neighboring voids. Groundwater pathways that had remained stable for a very long time are forced to reroute through a structure that has been altered. These changes rarely cause immediate collapse. Instead, they create latent weaknesses that can remain dormant for years until surrounding conditions shift enough to trigger them. This is why many sinkholes in Florida appear without warning, not because the ground suddenly became poor quality, but because the cavities below finally lost the support needed to hold up the layers above. In that context, a heavy rain, a period of intense groundwater pumping, or simply the cumulative effects of time can be enough to cause the surface to give way. Phosphate is not the only example. In South and Central Florida, limestone and sand have also been extensively mined to support construction, roads, and urban infrastructure. Each project has permits, procedures, and specific purposes. But taken together, these activities thin the natural buffer that once protected aquifers and helped maintain geological stability below. The impacts are uneven. Some places show little change for many years, while others become sensitive to even minor shifts. That unevenness makes the problem difficult to identify and hard to predict. From the perspective of coastal cities, these inland activities may seem far away. But geologically, Florida is a connected system. Changes inland may not cause flooding directly, yet they contribute to a ground foundation that becomes more vulnerable when later pressures arrive. Florida then carries many geological scars. Some are visible, many are not. And when new stresses are placed on ground that has already been weakened, the consequences begin to appear in places few expect. 5. How Losing the Everglades Weakened Florida's Defenses For most of Florida's natural history, there was one element that acted as a quiet protective layer between land and sea. It was not seawalls or engineered infrastructure. It was the Everglades. The Everglades once formed a vast ecosystem where fresh water moved slowly through dense vegetation, gradually soaking into the ground and remaining there for long periods. This process did more than support plants and wildlife. It kept soils moist, preserved peat layers, and created a natural buffer that absorbed both heavy rainfall and pressure from ocean tides. When Florida began large-scale water control more than a century ago, the Everglades were gradually altered. 
Canals were built to move water faster. Levees and control structures rose to protect cities and serve agriculture. At the time, these solutions made sense. They dried land, improved farming, and supported development. But altering natural flow left a consequence that went largely unnoticed for decades. As water drained away more quickly, peat soils dried out. When dry, they shrink. As they shrink, the surface lowers. This was not a sudden collapse, but a slow, ongoing process that steadily reduced the buffer's ability to absorb and hold water. As the Everglades weakened, Florida lost part of its natural capacity to regulate water. Rain no longer spread slowly across the landscape. Tides encountered less resistance from inland soils. Pressure from both sea and rainfall began pushing farther into the interior, where the ground had already become more sensitive due to earlier changes. Importantly, this impact does not stop at the Everglades' boundaries. As Florida's largest buffer lost function, coastal and urban areas were indirectly affected. Systems designed with the assumption that a vast absorption zone existed behind them began operating under different conditions. Small fluctuations became more visible. Old limits were crossed more often. The Everglades were never built to protect modern cities. Yet for thousands of years, they did so naturally. As that function weakened, Florida lost more than a unique ecosystem. The state lost part of an invisible defense that once kept land and water in balance. And when that final buffer weakens, all remaining pressures begin to stack up in ways far harder to control. 6. When small changes quietly push Florida underwater. There is no single moment when Florida can be said to have gone wrong. No instant when everything suddenly shifted. What is happening now is the result of many small changes, occurring at different times, for different reasons, gradually overlapping within the same system. Florida's ground was always fragile. It was stabilized by groundwater, by relatively intact limestone structure, and by natural buffers that regulated water slowly. For a long time, that system was flexible enough to adapt. Population grew, cities expanded, resources were extracted. Each step had its own logic, and in the short term, most brought clear benefits. But natural systems do not respond like human plans. They do not collapse the moment a threshold is crossed. They accumulate stress. As groundwater is steadily withdrawn, underground support pressure drops. As mined areas leave behind uneven structures, the land becomes more sensitive. As natural buffers weaken, rain and tides are no longer absorbed as before. On the surface, cities continue to grow heavier, while infrastructure remains based on older assumptions about elevation and stability. Each factor alone may not create a crisis, but when they occur together, the effect changes. Even a slight lowering of ground makes the same tide feel higher. Drainage systems that once operated near their limits begin failing more often. Areas once affected only occasionally become regularly flooded. What makes this story so difficult to grasp is the absence of a clear culprit. No single decision explains the whole picture. Past choices were not necessarily wrong, but repeated long enough within a limited system, they produced consequences that are hard to reverse. Sea levels are rising in Florida. That is real. But what is discussed less often is that the baseline used to measure that rise is itself changing. As the ground sinks, the ocean appears closer, even if it is not accelerating. For everyday residents, these changes do not show up as charts or graphs. They appear in daily life through streets that hold water longer, rising costs, and growing doubts about the stability of a place once considered familiar. Tiasi, Florida is not disappearing, nor is it collapsing in dramatic fashion. It is adjusting to pressures that have accumulated over decades. The remaining question is not whether this will continue, but who will be left to live longest with the consequences of ground that is slowly losing the height it once had. Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.